ladies and gentlemen, the Cayley Band from the Big Noise, Charlie Abel and Fred Wilkinson. <laughs> Now then, far am I. Uh, I'm Frida Morrison, and ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Scotch Radio and the team, let me welcome you to the Doric Film Festival 2022! <laughs> to launch us into the beginning, I invite up to the podium our first speaker, the man that will launch this special festival day on behalf of the judges, let me welcome to the stage the Robert Gordon University, Professor Peter Reid. Fit like folk. Yeah. I'm awfully glad to be able to say um, a puckly words on behalf of both the Doric Board um, and my fellow judges for the, the film festival. The Doric Board is recht prude to support and to celebrate everything that's best about the North East, our traditions, our culture and our um, heritage. And the, on behalf of the judges, um, I'm delighted also to be able to welcome you here today. And this annual showcase, the Doric Film Festival, is highlighting and showcasing film talent and it's a tribute to um, other entrants um, that you'll, you'll see, I think, this afternoon, just how vibrant that tongue is. You'll be fair tricket with the films. So enjoy the awards ceremony. Thank you very much indeed. We start with a clip for the school films. 5e Primary Hi, I'm Murray Ray and I'm a pupil of 5e Primary School and this is my father. I've got heaps of beasts and a few sheep. But like I'm Jamie Simpson and I like to help out on farms. We didn't hit arable, but our neighbours do. Silage and hay, and we files borrow some. Mern's Academy. It's funny, I always thought this place was as sleepy as well, Mrs. Bertram. But there's loads I didn't care about. I've never been to those hills over there. Unless you count sinking up to her knees in muck on a sponsored walk. Well, try reading that book again, and close your ear. It might have been screeve lang syne, but it still means something to us today. Below and around where Chris Guthrie lay, the June moors whispered and rustled and shook their cloaks. Hillside Primary There's no floors on it, why? There's thing and do no. Let's go up into the woods. What ah. are you, Fitty Dean? I'm Cad and your hood spray, and I speak for the trees. Then I cut them down because it's spoiling our world. It gives me great pleasure to invite Scott Begbie, the entertainment editor of the Press and Journal, that is sponsoring the school's category again this year, up to say a few words and open the envelope and announce the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Begbie. Um, I have to admit I'm the first non-Doric speaker to come up today, so you're going to have to forgive me. <laughs> Very sorry. Um, can I just say that just from the little clips we've seen, it shows a wealth of talent of the young people of the North East in filmmaking, but more importantly in filmmaking in their own tongue. And that is vital because the language is alive and it stays alive through the next generation. And as we can see, their contribution today has been absolutely stunning. I can't wait to see the winning entry. We'll open the envelope now. Open the envelope. Open the envelope. I was told it was black tie, by the way. He's <laughs> bonny. And the winner is Merns Academy. Thank <laughs> you.
judges up to tell us about a new award this year. A big hand for Jim Brun, MBE. Well, thank you very much, Frida. Now, the festival committee this year decided to pull one film out of the categories and award it a special Spirit of the Festival award. Our festival encourages us through Doric to look back at our tradition and heritage, but also look at the Doric in the present and look forward. This film tells the story of a village and a community that for generations relied on Fishin and spoke Tunzar in Fishin Doric. Its reliance on Fishin dwindled and oil became the master. Much of the village was demolished to make way for harbour expansion and the community was fragmented. However, they have now been fighting back to re-energise the community through teaching the youngsters music and dance and Doric through song and poetry. And through the involvement of the children, they are bringing the adult population together too. They embrace change. The big noise journey is beautifully told in the film. It fills every aim of the festival, the Doric past, the Doric present and the Doric future. A huge well done to the dedicated teachers, sponsors, filmmakers, and to all the enthusiastic and talented youngsters. In their own Tory words, I, 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 fine to hear you here. Ladies and gentlemen, I have great pleasure in inviting the Big Noise team to come forward to receive the Spirit of the Festival Award. <laughs> Okay, let's see that film from Big Noise Tour. Let's find out a wee bit more about the history of this mysterious ha. The Tanti Ha treasures, a Heilrich Meteca artifacts, portraits and memorabilia, was gotten over the last 800 years, and ain't inside, Ilka step takes you back through time. This ha was bigot in the 1960s and has a look at kind of time about it, but this is now the third Tanti Ha in Aberdeen, but far as the other twa begins gone tell. Well, the origins of the seven incorporated trades are back in the 12th century, when the tunes of craftsmen started to form wee cliques protecting the interest of their crafts and their income, the seller and their pooches. Finn Nixon 
kreet op Big Locomotive op de binnenbridge. Steam in en wait and for the signal to come into the station. But you were so used to it. You didn't think anything it was a woman 50 ton locomotive above you. Can uh, I remember that in the busyness of the station there was little wee scammel scarabs, three wheel articulated trucks running about here delivering parcels away. Uh, I mean uh, The days a, a next day delivery is nothing new. You could get next day delivery for almost anywhere in Britain. Kirsty Florence. On the railway brig stand Edith Cameron and her auntie Jessie, great granny and great great auntie of mine. To imagine their lives if they were here new, or if I was in their time. Ninety year, twa world wars, women's voting rights, a flood, a global pandemic to name but a few. Pananich Hill a Hinnis has seen it a', and this is far oor feet are planted. The black and white fades to here, present day, the same place we ca hame hail herted. Lindsay Colin Wilson. In 1924, a Mr. Hannah Yersine, Bonnie Muir Green was the ward garden belonging to een of the oldest houses in the area that had been there long before the lay of the area was developed. That was the year when the garden was sold to the community for guy near nothing, says it could be made into a bowling green. The ones that was made with, and ones the way it bed, are the bowling club closed down altogether in 2015. Seamus Logan Her, her uh, father had a boat and of course you see when the father had a boat the coins had to get to the gutter and or kept around or whatever it was. The mere hook level of our education didn't mean nothing for coins. Yeah. Nothing was self-educated. But my great-granny wrote a memoir when she was 99. And it was published Christian White Papers. She had a very hard life because the, the, her man was drowned off Canard Head. Tom Spears Maybe it's because you can see the steen circles and ruined castles surrounded by fields of grain or drills of tatties. It's all just a continuation of a history of the land and culture of the folk that's tied together with poems and ballads and songs that keep that history alive. Ballads like the Battle of Harla, the tell how MacDonald Lord of the Isles, in 1411, was stopped short in his tracks just outside Inveruri on his way to Sake Aberdeen. So I'm going to invite back Peter Reid to open the envelope and announce the winner. Peter, tap the code. Well, you've seen um, clips of the films there, and you'll have realised that a sair fecht that we had um, trying to pick um, between them. And for that very reason, we've actually got joint winners for this. Um, the films that have won made some other, other rare emotional connections with the theme of the festival, that sense of time. One through memory and reminiscence and far it sets the day. The other through how showing just how durable and um, long lasting some of our organizations and institutions and I suppose heritage is in the Northeast. So without further ado, I will open the envelope. And the giant winners of the individual award are Seamus Logan, We Far Has the Time Gain, and Charlie Abel, We Tarante Ha. (laughs) 
Seamus was just saying, it's it may be in my name, that it was Margaret Scott that won the award. <laughs> this is a, maybe a schmozel, but we can I hear Charlie coming across for there and playing his accordion at the same time to get his, his winner award. So could you hum a tune? Uh, only lasts a five years. You ready? One, two, da dee dum da da. Jimmy, tell the echo. Okay. So can I invite those on the short list to come down for their awards now? Tom Spears. Lindsay Colin Wilson, Kirsty Florence, and Finn Nixon. Big round of applause. <laughs> It comes a surprise, I'm sure, to many of you, but I am Charlie and Fred's agent. <laughs> and that song, The Hash of Benny Group, with many others, is available online for your downloading through Charlie's website, charlieable.com. <laughs> now, on with the film show. Now, before we proceed to the next category, the group category, at this time, you usually hear a special message for folk in the film industry, writers and actors, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest for this year, Haim Ground, Aberdeen filmmaker and writer Mike Gebb. Now, Mike began writing for the theatre in the late 90s and has had a dozen plays and musical plays and, and Scottish themes performed the length and breadth of the country. Mike has also written something like 14 books and the two more recent which shines a light on forgotten heroes and heroines of the northeast of Scotland, was supported by the Doric Board. Now, we are delighted to announce that a new film based on the story of the opera singer Mary Garden was launched last week. Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for Mike Gibb. Thank you, Frida. Can I have you as my agent as well? Because I mean, that, was a, that was a great introduction. Uh, yes, as you were saying. Um, somebody told me quite recently that there are two statues to women in Aberdeen, and they're both a Queen Victoria, which is pretty sad. I think she came from Aberdeen. And one of the reasons that I got involved with this for book here, which the Doric Board kindly sponsored, Forgotten Heroines in the North East, I'd written uh, plays with music about... Mary Slessor and Mary Garden, and uh, adapted uh, Doris and Morty, the, the book, the short stories by Lorna Moon um, from Stricken. And I just thought that there was so many great untold stories out there that we should could do that. And for those that don't know Mary Garden, that's one of the shocking things is that she was probably one of the biggest 
opera singers in the world, especially in America and in Europe, and yet back in Aberdeen, where she was born, and also she died. She died out in David Hospital, Meldrum. She was practically unknown. And uh, it, it was quite a sad thing, that the way that she, she passed away, almost penniless and completely forgotten. So that was why this thing came up of the Aberdeen's Forgotten Diva. So this is a short version. Don't know exactly what's going to happen with a longer one, but it will be coming online or something fairly soon. So thank you again to Doric Board for all the support. Dear, dear, clearly a hat from the millinery's department of Galloway's Lafayette in Paris wasn't designed to cope with the Aberdeen weather. Oh, I know I shouldn't have worn it, but it was such a beautiful morning. That's what encouraged me to take a stroll down to the Duthie Park. Unfortunately, I had to take refuge in a shelter. As I sat there, listening to the rain pattering on the roof, I was immediately transported back many years and many miles to the Opera Comique in Paris, where I was plucked from the audience and thrust onto the stage in the eponymous role of Louise. So, we proceed with the final category in the Doric Film Festival 2022. <laughs> and that's the group category that we have been waiting for. So let's spin the wheelies again. Let's see the clips of the three chosen entries. Doric TV, Fly Cup, and the Brickslayer. Doric TV. In summer, there was neeps to show and pay to mark. But it was September when the corn was cut. It was then stuck it, afore being carted back to the stand to be bigot into rocks in the corn yard. And so the year come full circle. I was brought up in Peterhead. My folk were fisher folk. My mother worked at the gut in and fill it in, and my dad was a cooper, making the bottles for a heron. Jericho Reed. But on you go. If the bad man scares you, I'll, I'll just be outside for you. Near Nithering. Why do you keep sending others folk in to speak to me? It's that Union Street I set up the afternoon. I can't get a minute's peace. And you haven't even brought in the payment. Ah, <sighs> Cola. Rileyville. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. You're either first to offer. I'm just trying to keep the peace. Oh, get the fly. Oh, get the fly. Every flaming wick splashing your cash. God, no winner Colin gets a while we've been so ticked. I'm no ticked. Hey, as a duke's doc. Aye, he's wrecked there. Jealous we minker. Come on then. Come on. Right. Ah! Oh, pals, pick you from the dead. I invite Jim Bruin, MBE, up to open the winning envelope and present the winning prize. Jim is in charge of our sponsors and he himself represents a sponsorship group that combines the Theta Care and Burns Club, the Lewis Grass at Gibbon Centre, James Brown himself and his brother David. And Jim is also one of our very esteemed judges. Now, before Jim opens the envelope, I would like to say a very big thank you to our sponsors, but I want to you, Jim, to say that as well. Most of them are connected with agriculture, and we've got through three new ones this year, which was just quite remarkable. And quite a few of them are not here because they're away to the Highland Show, and probably through the heat at the show or the drink, they haven't made it to the function here today. But they send their kindest regards. But no, I was never refused by anyone. Thank you. Right after our judging session in 2019, uh, we watched other films at FNN in June, 
and you sent me an email saying, I quote, after the judging session at RGU, I came down the road with a broad smile on my face. And all the entries were so different, I had so many attractive features for poetry, history, to music, and legend, and even original drama. There was, there was an obvious pride in their roots, he said, and a grasp of its importance about the area. And 18 of our entrants are winners. And next time, he said, they'll maybe be coming up for a check. Yours I, Jim Broon. Now, it's the same this year again, isn't it? Yes, I think my smile is even broader this year, I think, because uh, the standard has been very high and just so different. The topics are so wide now, too. And it's great, too, on the Doric board that we have uh, a writer here who benefited from the Doric board. We have Erin, who's produced the film today. So we're doing a good job on the Doric board, too, having supported some 60 projects since we started. And not only the projects, but it's given confidence to other folk to start writing in, in Doric too. And Mike was telling me that on his heroines that he's thinking of now writing a book about Frida Morrison as a heroine <laughs> and, and putting up a statue <laughs> and putting up a statue at Bers at a Boyne for her. <laughs> but they cannot, cannot get her to stand still. <laughs> right. Right, enough. I now invite Jim to open the envelope and announce the winning entry for the group category. Jim. Well, as you see, these entries were so different, in fact, it was quite difficult. But the winner is Doric TV. <laughs> Again, Doric TV. Now, it wouldn't be a competition a suit the participants. We invite the shortlisted teams doing for their merit awards. Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for the producer and cast or the fly cup and a piece and the brick slayer come doing for your awards, your merit awards. <laughs> Councillor Mark Finlater, who gave his inaugural speak in Doric, when he took the post of leader of the Aberdeenshire Council recently. So, our speaker of the day, Councillor Mark Finlater. Now, the eighth thing I've been told today is keep it short. Because they politicians speak a lot, and the Abdi Kens, me Kens, are speaking an awful lot. So I will keep it short, but it's really uh, a vote of thanks, I would think, to Abdi. Now, fit why is Doric important? Fit why keep speaking it? Fit why they speak pan loaf instead? And let the youngins forget? Fit why ging to the bother? Well, it's because uh, it's our part of us, it's in our souls. It's part of the land and the sea. It marks us for we are and for we come fae. And the Doric Film Festival has a part to play. Oh, this fun we've all been here. And I tell you something, we've had an awful lot of fun. And I'm sure the rest of you that have done films and Arthur you've done, and I loved seeing the Bairns today, great fun. So we've had a lot of fun uh, over time. Uh, and it's great to actually meet Frida in person and great to meet Jell, I saw Jell at uh, Cruden Bay uh, a few months ago. And we're all coming out of it. And this kind of gathering, for we're all coming together, it's kind of like a, and again, it's, it's a kind of breath of fresh air to him. We're, we're new to it yet, but we're all coming together, it said in the film there. Now, we've all had fun today, for sure, We gadgets and gizmos and films. Wheel Dean Abdi fit a fantastic show. I congratulate our every in here. I have learnt the new words and have remembered Somalians. 
we in this 21st century technology have played a part in keeping our native tongue alive and real. The mayor you speak, and I have said this, and I speak a lot, the mayor folk took a gint and, and ticked it and did it. So keep speaking the wonderful descriptive Doric words. It's your language, it's your heritage, it's your culture. But most important of all, it's your bairns tea. So hud gan abdi bort, hud, so hud gan bonny folks, hud gan to you are, and thank you Frida, right, and thank you to the Doric board, and thank you to Abdi here. So I'll keep it fine and short, thank you Frida. <laughs> Now, as Mark says, our language, Doric, is a treasure of words that contains our inspiration through childhood, maybe, and voices of our ancestors. It can embrace humour, sentiment of the heart, and even, on occasion, words for the kirk. But Sheena Blackhall, Sheena, Johan Sheena Blackhall, was appointed by the Doric board as our northeast marker. And it wouldn't be complete without her being here and gains a point. Well, if you're ever wandering about in the Upper Kirkgate, for Gordon and Watson, the undertakers, is look aside it and there's a cafe and it's, there's an awful fine baked at it. But not just that, the walls are clattered with Doric sounds. It's a full of Doric speak. And so it's a rare place. But evolving Doric, it does evolve, you see. I bide in a three generational house. And I sleep with my granddaughter, Winnie, past ten. And she went and did her homework. So any night I said to Winnie, do your homework. And she said, Nah, I'm not going up that long. <laughs> so there was the bath when you say it. So next time somebody tells you, do something that I want to do, I'm not going up that long. Film and our culture. If it marks the Northeast special, you hear it from the news. The clothes we wear are global, but nay the words we use. And t-shirt, jeans and hoodies, we could be American. But we, I say, if it like the day, and nay, well, howdy, man. It's like a stick of granite rock, the words run through our mara, like oxter, scutter, water gar, or midden, minging, Bara, and fin we film our stories, ne washlin with the spellin. We use our speak to celebrate our culture in the telling. As I come doing the Memsey, I heard an Alman spear, far as the bonny dialect that ain't was spoken here. J.C. Milne in his poem, Tempor Mutantur, meaning times change or times have changed. I have, but we will continue to change and our work will change with it. Should we choose to talk with it, and it's time to embrace change and work with it. The heroine in Scott Square, Chris Guthrie, sits watching the wee wax ganaf and the crofts Arun Benahi. Her she refers to Benahi, was crowned with mists, and Benahi was walking into the night. But as Chris sits look, looking with hands clasped around her knees, watching the wee legs going off, she realise, realises that change that rules the earth, the sky and the waters underneath the earth, might be stayed by nin or the dreams of men. And that's the best conclusion of all. And we need to catch the language before it walks into the night like Benahi. The present time is ours. And my goodness, if nothing else, this film project has proved the will is there in Barrowlands. The mindset is right, and as I said before, fit why should be lose and cast aside our treasure or words and cripple our expression that contains our, our inspiration of childhood and voices of our ancestors like something fading for sight, like Benahi. Language is part of our identity, but I would go further. Our native language is the song of our soul. Before I go, I would like to say a very big thank you to folk who have done so much to look after our language and our culture. 
and make sure it is still part of that carrying stream. We are eternally indebted to you. There are so many I could mention and know that your work is appreciated. And I mention in particular the president of the Buchan Field Club and former president of the Buchan Heritage Society, the late Sandy May, for Pastawa last year. Sandy was a great supporter of this film festival. But finally, I'd like to mention some other very special folk for I have been with me right through the start of this project a while back in 2019. Right through the start, fan, we were just starting off with posters and logos and asking. And thank you especially to the voice of the film, Josh Bircham, ladies and gentlemen. To the team for have worked their magic behind the scenes to make this possible. And of course, members of the Doric Board, they have provided advice, support, and maybe even bits of wisdom at times. Through the Scots Radio and Doric Film Festival team, to our supporters and sponsors, a very big thank you. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your support. And may the win I be at your back and your tackets never roost. <laughs> and a safe journey home. We are really delighted about it. Um, it's a bit of a surprise because, you know, Doric's not spoken um, that naturally by the young people at Mearns Academy, so we all had to learn it. Um, so everyone was learning Doric from scratch um, for this film, so we're really happy that it was able to win. Um, it shows that they made a really good kind of improvement in their, in their Doric. Well, we're delighted to win because so many of the films were wonderful, but the good thing is that uh, Mum has finally been able to tell her story at 88. It's been an amazing project to be part of and so much fun. And now we've got this to show for it. Woohoo! I never expected such a thing, but it's great. I really enjoyed being in the festival and I really felt like all the hard work and practice really paid off. I'm absolutely delighted. It's been a lot of hard work, a lot of background going into it, but we've done it from our hearts and from our soul and we couldn't have done it any better than that. Fair cricket. It's just, uh, I'm, I'm Tina back. It's uh, great to win an award and I'm I'm really happy about it and I have to thank Albert Thompson for helped. He wrote the script and uh, we've put the, the film together so I'm, I'm real, I'm real chuffed. Fit like a big nice story!